Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the Daily Dose of Hope. I am Chaplain Bob, and you are watching the Daily Dose of Hope. Good afternoon. It's about 1233, like I said here, and we want to thank all of you for being here with us today. God bless all of you. Today, we are going to be considering something that we looked at, uh, I think it was about a week and a half ago, we looked at faith. And um, on a few of our platforms, we had enormous amount of people that were interested in faith. And I started thinking about faith in conjunction with being saved, salvation. What does it mean to be saved? I started thinking about that this morning, and I, I read a, a little lesson from a, a pastor that, um, that used to be up in uh, Big Bear, uh, California. Then he moved on to Flagstaff, Arizona, uh, and did some ministry there as a as a senior pastor. So I read some of his stuff today, and there was something that stuck out to me. And um, <clears throat> I'm not going to be able to put it up on the screen, but I'm going to read it to you in kind of a a, a beginning sense. Uh, the question is: um, Have you ever asked anybody? Uh, this question, I'm trying to find it here. Here it is. Why should God let you into heaven? Okay, that's a, that's a provocative question there, right? Why should God let you into heaven? Okay. And um, <clears throat> it goes on to say that most people that hear this question, uh, they'll answer it uh, maybe two or three different ways. One, I've tried to be a good person my whole life. That's why God would let me into heaven. Or, I've never hurt anyone intentionally, and I've lived a very good life. Um, and so, the writer here, which is the, uh, the pastor that I looked at, Stephen J. Cole, said, well, they do this. The way to be accepted by God is try, try, they try and sincerely live a good life. To bear witness to people who think like that, you need to be clear on what it means to be saved, the writer writes. So God the Father um, sent his only son to heaven, and people still don't understand what came to heaven. We covered that yesterday. But today what we want to do is we want to look at uh, this topic. This is how you are saved. Paul, the writer in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 5, 8 to 10, is very clear. This is how you are saved. He writes this word for word. And if you know anything about the Bible, you know that God is the one who breathed this out loud. He breathed this into the mind and probably audibly for all we know. Uh, we're, not, we're not privy to that. But he said to Paul, please write this down. And one of the things he wrote down was here in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 5 and 8 to 10. Let's read it together, and then we'll go back and look at each part individually. Paul says, we're made, <clears throat> he made us alive with the Messiah, that's Jesus, even though we were dead in trespasses. You are saved by grace, verse 8 and 9. For you are saved by grace through faith, and this is not from yourselves, it is God's gift, not from works, so that no one can boast. Verse 10, for we are his creation created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared ahead of time so that we should walk in them. Okay, so the question is, um, how are you saved? Okay, the writer in the uh, literature that I read this morning, he just asked the question, why should God let you into heaven? Okay, but my question to you is, do you know you're saved? And how do you know you're saved? 
Well, I'm going to answer that right now. Paul's going to answer that right now, the writer of a majority of the New Testament. But let's just quickly ask God to bless our time together. Let's bow our heads. Lord God, mighty Father, powerful Father, we love you. We thank you for the consideration of Ephesians chapter 2. We pray as we learn through the verses 5 and 8 through 10, Lord, that we would understand how we are saved. We love you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We praise, praise your holy name, and we pray all of this in Jesus Christ, the precious Savior's name. Amen. So, we start off here um, in verse number 5. And God made us alive with the Messiah, even though we were dead in trespasses. Now, what does that mean? Did you know that if you just did one bad thing in your life, one naughty thing in your life, you're not good enough for God? That's how, God, that's how good God is. The Bible says that God cannot look upon sin. He has to turn away. He has nothing to do with sin. So the writer here, which is Paul, says, God made us alive with the Messiah, that's Jesus, even though we were dead in trespasses. We were doomed, but God made us alive with the Messiah. He sent his only, beloved, his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to the cross. If you look up to Jesus Christ and you say, yes, I believe he's the Savior, I believe that he can take away my sins, past, present, and future, that's called repentance, to turn away from the sins and turn to Jesus. If you believe that, then Paul says here, we're made alive with the Messiah, even though we were already dead in our tracks. That's how much God loves you. Paul answers at the end of this verse, verse 5, he says, You are saved by grace. You're saved by grace. Grace is a gift of God for no reason other than that he loves you. And he wants you to be a part of his family. So if today you're feeling like God is calling you, God's been tugging at your heart for a while for you to acknowledge him, for you to say yes to him. Say yes to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Say yes to Jesus Christ who hung on that cross, who paid for all sins once and for all, for all. At all he did it all at once. You have to be reminded, I have to be reminded to repent of those sins, to turn away from those sins. That doesn't mean you're going to be perfect. There's going to be periods of your life where you are going to stumble. You are going to struggle through those things. But you have a Savior in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, we want to answer this question, how are you saved? You're saved by grace, Paul asserts here. Grace is a free gift of God. You, when you receive a gift from somebody, somebody comes to your home, let's say they surprise you with a gift, some flowers, or they surprise you with something nice, maybe some type of food, or maybe they give you something. You're surprised by that. It's, it's their doing. They made the initiative to do it. I know today during birthdays and during Christmas time, we think, in our minds, we're supposed to receive gifts. But when somebody gives you a gift, that is a free gift. It's given to you freely. The person thought about it and then said, I want to give this to my friend or to my loved one. God gave you the ultimate gift, his son, Jesus. And you are saved by his grace. Now let's look at the next set of verses, verses 8 and 9. For you are saved by grace, Paul explains it now, you are saved by grace through faith. Now you have just a little ounce, we talked about this yesterday, you just have a little tiny amount of, gra of, of faith. 
And through that tiny little amount of faith, even if it's a microscopic amount of faith, coupled with God's enormous amount of grace, Paul says you are saved. Saved from what? Saved from eternal damnation. Saved from going to hell. You're saved from all time being able to live forever and ever. I think today uh, something that struck me was when I woke up this morning, uh, one of my classmates had passed away. And I didn't remember her, but she was apparently loved by many, not just her family, but by her friends in high school. And I started thinking about death. <clears throat> and I started thinking about how people say this all the time. They say, well, at least you're no longer suffering. Rest in peace. May your soul rest. And that's called a man-made version of what you say when somebody dies. But a Christian ought to ask the question, was that person saved? Now, we don't always know if somebody's saved. Sometimes we don't know the person well enough to know if they had a relationship, if they believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ even said himself, you cannot do anything without me. That includes being saved. Paul says it here, you're saved by grace through faith, and this is not of yourselves, it's God's gift. God gives you a gift. Not from works, look what Paul says here, not from works so that no one can boast. Much of the world today believes that if you are a good person and you've done some good things, then you're saved. And when somebody dies, they always say all the nice things about that person. Oh, she smiled. She was wonderful. I remember she gave me her lunch money when we were in grade nine. That's not how one is saved. It's saved, you are saved through your faith, your little ounce of faith, or your enormous amount of faith. But it is by God's grace that your faith, you are saved through your faith. Without God's grace, all of us, including me, we were doomed for destruction. We're not good enough. Now, I hope you understand this. When you hear somebody say that a person is sick and in bed, dying, the question should be right away is not how long will they live here on earth, but are they saved for eternity? And that will open up a question for that person that's sick. It will open up a question for the person that's caring for them. Are they saved for all of eternity? When somebody's saved for all of eternity, there is a little bit of reassurance there. There's, there's a feeling of, of uh, comfort there because we know that that person is indeed going to a better place. But when the person is said to have not had a relationship with God, in fact, some people say, well, they're just a nice person. They really were a good person. Well, being a good person, it, Paul does not say being a good person gets you into heaven. Paul does not say that when you gave somebody your lunch money in grade 9, you're saved. It says, for you are saved by grace through faith, and this is not of yourselves. It's God's gift, not from works, so that no one can boast. You can do nothing to get yourself into heaven. Jesus says, you can do nothing apart from me to get yourself into heaven. You must believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son. Look here in verse 10. For we are his creation, Paul says. We are God's creation, created in Christ Jesus for good works. So the creator was Jesus Christ, God the Son. He was always here, eternity past. Okay, and there's a lot of studies on that. We can do that sometime as a Bible study, as a, as a message. But we are created, Paul says, in Christ for good works. 
Jesus Christ and God the Father have already prepared ahead of time these good works that we're supposed to do. That's why even if you're not a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ and you do something good for somebody, it makes you feel like a million dollars. You feel so good when you do good things for people. Why? Because God already created you to do good works. But because you're an unbeliever and you're caught up in this world, in the flesh, you tend to spend more time in the flesh and toil in the flesh than you do doing the works that God has already given you. Now, how can you be released to do all these good works? Paul says it here. For we are his creation, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared ahead of time so that we should walk in them. How do we walk in them? Got to go back to verses 8 and 9. You are saved by grace through faith. You don't need to have a large amount of faith to be saved. You need to have a large amount of grace to be saved. Your faith can be minuscule, it can be minute, it can be microscopic, like I mentioned before. And this is not from you. This is not from yourselves, Paul says. It's God's gift, not from works, so that no one can boast. God needs to receive all the glory in everything that happens that's good. So why would God want to give you an opportunity to be saved by your own works? Then you would boast about it. You would pat yourself on the back. You would tell everybody about it. You're not the one who saves you. God is the one who saves you. Jesus Christ, the Savior, saves you. Have faith in Him on the cross. Remember what He did on that cross. Repent from the sins. Past, present, future, God's going to, and has already done so, paid the price for that by putting His Son up there. When you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you are saved. Remember, Jesus says, apart from me, you can do nothing. You cannot have eternal life if you're apart from God. If you're apart from Jesus Christ, you cannot have eternal life. So I'm not trying to hurt anybody's feelings or rain on anybody's parade. But when somebody passes away, it is incorrect for you to say, rest in peace. Now you're, no, you're somewhere where there's no more toiling, there's no more hurting, there's no more pain. We don't know that unless you actually know that that person believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. That is how you are saved. You're saved, according to Paul, by grace through faith, not by good works. Let's bow our heads. Lord God, Mighty Father, we thank you and praise you for being a powerful, mighty Father. Lord, thank you for teaching us how to be saved. Lord, thank you for your grace. Thank you for the grace upon grace that you have bestowed in my life personally, Lord. Just about 11 weeks ago, Lord, I was close to death. But by your grace, and I have great faith in you, Lord, you know that. But by your grace, I was saved one more time from death here on earth. But I know someday, and I have no doubt in this, I know someday I'm going to be in eternity with you. I know someday this body is going to fail. And when it does, Lord, I have no doubt in my mind I've been saved. I know I will be in eternity with your, you, your Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Lord, thank you. Thank you for that promise. We love you. And it's in Jesus Christ, the precious Savior's name, we pray all of this. Amen. I hope this helps you. I hope this message today will help you uh, to better understand how you are saved, but also to help others that want to be saved. There are a lot of people in Christian churches today that do not know if they're really saved. They are hoping to be saved, but they don't really understand. They hear words like salvation, and they don't understand what that really means. 
They hear about eternal life, but they don't understand what that means. Now you know exactly how you're saved. By grace, you are saved through your faith, not by good works, so that you can't boast about it. Tell a friend about that today. All right, everybody. God bless you. We'll see you the next time that we're uh, back here. I think we're going to try to be on a Sunday at uh, Hope Hill Sunday Morning Gathering. So we hope that you'll join us on Sunday morning at 10 a.m. I'm going to take Saturday off. God bless you. Take care. Bye-bye.